And welcome to Nolan Financial Radio with me, Tara Nolan. And I am excited today to be talking to you about how do you find your financial services professional? It's kind of a follow up to the conversation we were having last week. For those of you who are new to the show, just want to remind you, you can always contact Chris and I if you have a question at 719-210-4242. And you can also go to my website at www.taraenolan.com. While you're there, you want to click on the radio page because we record all of these shows and we have lots of educational topics. We talk about everything from Medicare and Social Security to IRAs to annuities to life insurance to downside protection and active money man management in the market. So a lot of topics that we cover. And occasionally all... and occasionally pizza. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely pizza. <laughs> so before we jump into our topic today, let me just check in with Tony. Tony, how are you doing today? Oh, I am so good today, Tara. I am fantabulous. I, 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 that's how good I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, and enjoying, hey, spring is finally on its way in. And just I've been really busy, though, uh, extremely busy, but uh, got some time off coming up next week. So that'll be good. Uh, looking forward to that. But also the show every week. Uh, this is the one time a week I get to have a lot of fun when you and I do this show, we always have fun and we, we talk about topics that are important and I always manage to learn something from you, Tara, despite myself, as I like to say, uh, <laughs> but, uh, speaking of that, uh, Tara, how have you been? What's going on in your world? Well, you know, I, I'm just waiting for winter to be done because I'm really looking forward to being able to have more time to ride the horses and, and Tony, here's a, here's a little bit of news that's happening is a good friend of mine. Here's how old I am. A good friend, a classmate of mine from the Air Force Academy. Her son is graduating this year. Oh. And, and, and she's going to come stay. And Tony, <laughs> she has nine kids. Nine. And so. Oh, my goodness. So they're going to come to the house. And I said, bring a bunch of air mattresses. We got a lot of yeah. floor space. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure everybody is fed and there'll be a room for everybody to sleep in. That's a big family. <laughs> you better. <laughs> so, so we're Chris and I are gonna. We're looking forward to it, though. I haven't seen her in forever, and it's just gonna be a lot of fun. You might need to rent a truck to get some food in for that. But I always joke, Tony. So she made up for me because I didn't have kids, but she had plenty on my behalf. <laughs> oh, well, wait now. Wait a minute, Tara. You say you didn't. You say you didn't have kids, but what about Chris? <laughs> and, and the horses. Uh, I think oh. those are your kids. Oh, I mean. You know, you, they're actually not, Tony. Those are my animals. I'm the oldest of six. So yeah. I, I, I did a lot of diaper changing and uh, cooking when I was growing up. So, you know, I'm very pleased that we have. Well, our... I know I know Chris is uh, Chris is obviously uh, a couple of different things to you. Uh, he's your husband. He's your business partner. But uh, we can make fun of Chris. He's also a kid you have to take care of. So it's like you had children, <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, we always joke about it. I think there's like a certain level of maturity that you'd never quite reach when you don't actually have your own kids because, <laughs> <laughs> because there's just never an emergency that is going to be so dire like it is if you have kids. Yeah. And so, well, my wife says there's a certain level of maturity you never reach if you're a man in general. <laughs> In general, she has that. I'm I don't know where she there. would get. Where would she get that idea, Tara? I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> well, hey, last week you were. We started. This is part two of last week's episode, which are, we're talking about questions to ask when choosing a financial services professional, things you need to know. Uh, of course, you know, we can beat the drum all day on why it's so important to work with a financial professional. But as a financial services professional, you were going over some things you need to ask. And, and there were some good ones, like how do you get paid? You know, being transparent, make sure they're transparent about the the fees and, you know, are you keeping, are you a fiduciary? Do you keep your client's best interests in mind at all times? And going over some of these questions, uh, what services do you provide to your clients? These are some of the things that we talked about in last week's show, and they're all so important, but we didn't get, we only got about halfway through the list as we are wont to do, uh, because we like to chat, uh, and have fun on the show, but there was a lot to go over. 
and there's a there's a lot there. So uh, I, I wanted to start. Uh, what's the next big question, Tara, do you, that you think we need to be looking well, at? Here's the next big question. And it's great because I actually just had this with a new client last week. The question is, what happens to my money if something happens to you? And oh, wow. I was like, that's, that's a great question. Because I've always what asked happened. People, yeah. So it's what happens to my money if something happens to you, my financial advisor? And it's a perfect question because I'm always asking people those tough questions like what happens to your family if you get killed in a car crash or, you know, how are you going to make sure that your children are provided for or how are you going to make sure your partner's provided for? So it's, it's a great question. And, and, and this is a question you should always ask your financial advisor because everyone handles it a little bit different. And so for um, Chris and I, what we actually have, Tony, is we have a succession plan. So we've worked with our compliance officer and we have that plan in play of what happens if something happens to Chris and I. But here's the big picture, Tony, is that with the companies that we work with in our business, um, each one of those companies in a pinch, well, your money will keep being managed the way it was being managed. So that will give you time. Then, um, you know, Chris and I will have a couple of recommended advisors that you can work with if you had to take over for us. So your, your money will continue to be managed, right? Because we put the plan in play and that's going. So that plan doesn't change. The only thing that if something happened to Chris and I is that you would just have to figure out who's going to be your, your personal connector to keep your plan going. So that's how Chris and I do it. But you want to ask that question, Tony, because there sure. are there are some mom and pop shops where the person is one stop shop and they do all the investing in the market and they do yep. everything by themselves. So you want to yep. find out what's going to happen there. And then there's also the, the large companies where, you know, advisors can come and go and your advisor could have left and you don't even know or they, yeah. something could have happened to them. So it's it's a really good question to ask because that's terrifying, right, to think all of a sudden something happens to your financial advisor. Where's my money? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Exactly. So, you know, yeah, that's up there. I, I think that's up there. Important questions like uh how much is this going to cost me? How do you get paid? Uh, what happens to my money if something happens to you? That's huge. Uh, and you know, uh, what, you know, what are, what's involved in what you do for me? I mean, that's just, just the, the, you make them go over. And then I think a big one that we did mention in part one that we should mention again is, um, uh, what is your philosophy? Ask the person that you're talking to, yeah you know, what's your investment philosophy and what do you think is the most important thing regarding my finances uh, that I need to be aware of? And, you know, what about retirement? And, uh, you know, but I think there's other questions too. One of the things I ask is, you know, what about taxes in retirement? How do you deal with taxes? Do you do anything with taxes? Does your firm work with CPAs or what do you do there? And that's one I imagine you get asked as well, isn't it? It is, Tony. And, and here's like the best question you should always ask in an interview. The last question should always be, is there anything I forgot to ask you? Oh, yeah. There, yeah I like that. That's yeah. like interview 101 is after you've yeah. asked all the questions, you just say, well, is there anything else I should have asked you? Yeah. And and so when someone asks me that question, I love it because I go, if they didn't already ask me, I talk about, well, here's how I get paid to make sure you know that. And then I go back to that philosophy question and say, you know, there's different ways that your money can be managed. You know, some people are super, they want to lean forward and be as much about growth and be as aggressive as they can. And then some people, I, I met this one advisor, Tony, and he said, the only answer for everyone out there is a fixed index annuity. That's it. Wow. <laughs> and so when you went to that guy, that's all, that was it. And oh, that's that was, not good. That was, well, it, that was his philosophy was, yeah. you know what? You're, one I'm going to make sure you yeah. never lose a dime. And yeah. And so for me, like my philosophy is right. There's always a balance. Yeah, and, there has to be a balance. Yeah. And it's and it depends is a big question because I'm not going to do the same thing for a 30 year old that I'm going to do for a 60 year old. I'm just not right. Yeah. And, you know, or I'm not going to recommend at the end of the day, it's your money. You do what you want, but I'm going to yep. have different recommendations. You know, what, what if you're single? Well, how do we look at that versus what if you have four kids or, yep. you know, what if you have a special needs parent or so anyway, you should always ask, you know, 
Yeah. What else should I be asking you? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Well, one thing I would ask and that uh, I think our listeners should ask, and and Terry, you can tell me what you think of this question is, uh, why should I work with a, why do I need to work with a financial professional? Why, why can't I just have a 401k and retire? What, why do I, why should I be working with someone like yourself? Well, and Tony, I'm really getting into this in the book. And I just would ask everybody who's watching to just to take a minute and think about that last, you know, heartwarming commercial you saw. That one, you know, where it's the the families are laughing and the kids are playing or there's the couple handing, holding hands, walking on the beach. Yeah. You know, there's that older couple watching the sunset. Yep. What was the commercial even for? <laughs> was, was it was it life insurance, mutual funds or Viagra? Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) So there's a lot of um, advertising dollars spent making you feel like you can do this yourself. And Mm -hmm. and I think it plays on the American independence, right? The rugged individualism. I can do it myself and I should be able to do it myself. Yeah. And, And so there's a lot of it coming at you in the news and the media making you feel like you should do it yourself because it's cheaper. But here's the thing, Tony, is doesn't really cost you an arm and a leg. And it's, it's not really that much more expensive working with an advisor than just doing it by yourself. Now, let me say there's no limit, right. To how much you could pay. Right. Right. That's true. That's (laughs) true. But there's, you know, for mutual funds, they already have 12 B one fees baked into those things. And for insurance, if you need insurance, you're not going to get a better deal figuring it out by yourself versus having an advisor because it's oh, still yeah. going to cost you the same. So all things equal, why wouldn't you get help? And there's a lot of research out there. There's always the anomalies of people who can do it really well by themselves. But a lot of research shows because you're trying to put this puzzle together of, of protecting your family and investing in the market and maybe having some real estate, you know, all these pieces. Healthcare, gonna, inflation, taxes. You're going to do better care. if you have an expert helping you with your plan. Because yeah. It's what I do for a living, Tony. When I need to go yeah. to the doctor, I don't pick up a book and figure it out myself. I just no. go to the doctor. <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to do brain surgery on myself. I'm going to go to a brain surgeon. And, and it's just when it comes to something as critical as your health and your finances, which are two things you need in life, you have to have, uh, you don't want to do those things alone. You don't want to self-diagnose your health and take risks with your health and you don't want to self-diagnose your finances and your retirement uh and your livelihood so uh you want to work with a professional and I, yeah that's just uh, that's uh, that's key and i just think that people uh, that's the key reason to work with a financial professional but it's important to hear you explain it back. Uh, some people, depending on the financial professional's answer, you may not want to work with them. You know what I mean? If it doesn't fit your philosophy, you might want to look for somebody else. And and I think you brought up a good point that we hadn't really touched on, and that's a financial professional that says, you said you, you'd talk to this one financial professional, and I know you go to a lot of events and meetings and, and talk to other financial professionals out there. But um, that they said, uh, you know, their answer for everything is fixed index annuities. That's all they recommend to their clients. Uh, And so uh, you want to find a financial professional that offers, is just going to look at whatever's available out there, what's in your best interest. And it might be a fixed indexed annuity along with stock markets. Maybe it's bonds, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's real estate. Maybe it's an insurance policy plus this people, different people need different things. And you've got to look at the big picture, don't you? Well, that's my philosophy, Tony, because I don't, I think coming to someone with this solution and going, I have this widget. I think this widget's perfect for you. That how, how do you know that that was tailored for you? Now the widget might be good for you, but I think it's much better to go. What problem are you trying to solve? And then we go and look at all the widgets and say, okay, because you have this problem, I'm going to pick these things for you. And and that's a better way than if, if, if I, someone comes to you and says, I have this perfect widget and you should have it. That's when I would get a little suspect and go, you don't even know me. Yeah. You know, you have the solution for me. You don't even, I haven't even told you anything. 
Right. There you go. Yeah. If they're trying to push something on you uh, before you've really gotten to know each other, that's a problem. Yeah. That's a, another red. We talk about the red, red flag. flag. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a red flag. Well, uh, now we should probably take a quick break here to let our listeners know uh, about what you have on the website and how to get a hold of you to set up that no cost compl- uh, uh, consultation. Well, yeah, Tony. So Chris and I, we always, after the radio show, we set aside 20 complimentary appointments for those first 20 callers because we want to connect with those people that say, I want to work with somebody who's going to help me create the maximum possible situation with what I have. And and for those folks that are listening today that go, I want you to look at what I'm doing and tell me how I can make it better. That's what it's really about today. So Tony, that number is 719-210-4242. And you can also go to the website, www.taraenolan.com. While you're there, you can kind of check out the different services that we offer, see what we look like and all that kind of good stuff. And also sign up on the radio show because you can listen to more educational topics. But give us a call, 719-210-4242. If you really want to sit down and go, am I optimizing and taking advantage of everything that I should be and can be? Right. There you go. I think that's great, Tara. And now listeners, during the first segment of today's show and on last week's show, uh, we looked at some of the most critical questions you can take to a first meeting with an FSP, as we call them, a financial services professional, uh, if you're considering doing business with them or uh, making them a member of your team to help you with your finances. So uh, what do you have for us now in this segment, Tara? Where do you want to go? We're going to get into a little more detail. So obviously, one for most people, I can actually say, Tony, most people go, I need to figure out my finances when they're getting close to retirement. Yeah. Now, I always time is your best friend. So the sooner you do that, the better. But yeah. getting close to retirement is like one of the first kind of nudges that go, oh, I really need to take this off of my should do list and put it on my I will do list. Yes. <laughs> things to do. Yeah. Today. Things to do today. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the first thing this is I like this article I was reading It said the average couple who retires at 65 We'll spend about $280,000 oh. in health care for the remainder Yikes. of their lives. That's crazy. So that's $280,000. Yeah. And that's what you call a heart-stopping <laughs> amount of money. I had a little mini stroke right there. I, uh, but I'm I'm sure a lot of our listeners are thinking the same thing I am, Tara, is uh, where does, wait, what about Medicare? Uh, where does that fit into health care then after age 65? Well, and, and that, just to put it into perspective, when I broke my ankle and I had health care, the bill, Tony, it was $3,000 just for the ambulance ride. Oh. So you can imagine like when you started getting into the surgery. That's an expensive Uber. And exactly. And you might uh, want to Uber to the hospital. Well, my, my ankle was at a right ang- a right angle, 90 oh. degree angle to my oh. leg. So nobody, oh. everybody was like, we're not giving you a ride. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. You have to call an ambulance for something that serious. Yeah. But, but you say, but you have, I had insurance, but what, so people say, well, what about Medicare? And here's the thing, Tony is Medicare covers 80%. And so 20% can get to be a lot of money when you say 20% of what, you know, 20, 20% oh, yeah. of a hundred dollars on a, a normal checkup. That's 20 bucks. That's not a big deal. Yeah. 20% yep. no of a hundred thousand dollars. That gets to be a lot more money. And yeah. So, so for my people approaching uh, retirement and when they start to consider Medicare, Tony, I bring in my medical specialist right away because how sure. you protect yourself, from medical expenses can change your whole financial world. And if you have to take that nest egg that you've been building, protecting and have to start spending it on medical costs, that's Mm. not, that doesn't feel like a lot of fun in retirement. (laughs) And no, it it definitely doesn't. And, you know, I I mean, relying on Medicare, uh, but not relying too much on Medicare is a great strategy. Like you say. Well, and there's, and there's options that exist in there because there's different kinds of insurance you can get to cover that extra 20%. And then that gets into the, the big time conversations about how do you want to do that? But yeah, just leaving yourself wide open and saying, well, I'm covered because I have Medicare. And yeah. 
the, the big thing too is Medicare does not provide long-term care. There's uh, about 90 days that you can get some coverage like as a, a transition from the hospital, but they don't do like, if you need to go into long-term care, you're not covered for that. And long-term care is expensive. We're yeah. Talking- assist, assisted living, long-term care, which, you know, memory care, Medicare does not cover those things at all. Right. And, and for a lot of families that can be, you know, those are about five grand a month and on wow. the lower end. Wow. So, wow. so, so this what's is a big part. Yep. So what's, what's the next thing we need to consider? Well, then here's the, the next big thing that we do shows on is you want to talk about your social security strategy. Uh, yep. Because if, it usually comes up social security, taxes, Medicare, right? Well, and you know, social security was never designed to be a retirement plan, but it's become such an integral part because everybody knows about it. You pay into it the whole time you're working. Yep. And this is something I'll actually talk with my small business owners about, like, are you paying into social security or not? Because it makes a difference. And the good thing about social security is it doesn't matter the quality of your health, you get it. So it doesn't matter if you're diabetic, if you're a smoker, right. if you have any health care issues. So you want to make sure that you take your social security at the right time. Cause there's still a lot of um, confusion about it. Some people want to take it as soon as they can at 62, but there's, there's downsides to that. And some people, they just don't know when to take it. And I could, here's my, my big story is um, for my mom, she was going to retire. She had went down and filed to start taking her social security. And mm-hmm. as I knew, like almost everyone who retires today, Tony, they don't really retire. Right. And so, so she went back to work. And so we had to go back to the social security office and stop that. Yeah. And luckily we were able to do that pretty easily. But the difference now, Tony, is she was going to do that when she was 65. She's now 73 and she's still working. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> so, so and but probably because, because she wants to be. Yeah. She loves it. She's teaching. Yeah. She loves it. Yeah. And, 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 but the thing is though, is there's a difference now. She was only going to get twelve hundred dollars at 65 now she's getting twenty eight hundred dollars oh wow yeah That's a big because difference because month. you let it roll up it makes a huge difference and so you know so in that situation it didn't make sense for her to start now i have right. some clients have different situations and sometimes oh, you sure. might need to but social security is it's one of those income streams and we talk about retirement there's not like just one pension anymore now you're going to have, hopefully, if, if you have a job where you've got a pension, you're going to have your 401k, you're going to have social security, you're going to have these multiple income streams. And so right. we want to take advantage and maximize everything. Right. So managing that retirement income is a huge part of what you do and how you help people. And part of that income is social security. A part of it, like you say, 401ks or IRAs. Some people are fortunate enough to have pensions uh, who may have government uh, jobs or, or work for the government. So uh, I think that's great. Now, what's another thing that we need to be aware of when it comes to retirement planning? So here's the big one, Tony, is taxes, right? Yep. I knew that was coming. I told you. I knew it. <laughs> well, and, and I, I think it's really important that people understand, like, why do we have to save for retirement? It wasn't always like this. Right. You know, if you go back historically, back in the ancient Greeks and in the American Revolution, military soldiers have always been given an income for life if they survived, right? So your your strategy for that that point was just to survive the battle <laughs> and you would get a pension. And then, <laughs> you know, it started in um, with the Income Act of uh, in ni- in the 20s and then if you look at the 60s, the government passed legislation that made it uh, a tax break for companies if they created pension plans. So pensions started to become a very normal thing in in our society because companies got tax breaks, right? Not because it was, they were taking care of their employees, but because the companies got a tax break for that. And like my grandfather, he had a a great pension and Tony, he died. My grandmother lived another 20 years and she got his full pension that whole time. Oh, wow. That's huge. And and so, so my grandparents didn't teach my parents about money because they didn't have to save for retirement because yeah, they, had they were set. Yeah. And they then were set. what started to happen in the seventies and the eighties is this, I think probably most of you've heard the term, the golden parachutes and the tax code had a clause where they could give the CEOs and the high, high ups in the companies extra money in their retirement plans. 
And the company said, oh, well, you know what? Why don't we just do this for everybody? We can stop our expense of having to create pensions and just give everyone a 401k. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, all the responsibility for your retirement was shifted onto you as an employee, but you didn't know it. And so mm. now it's such an important thing that we have to all start saving for retirement. And we're all playing catch up, right? Because you're not learning about this in school. You don't learn about it from home because your parents and grandparents didn't have to do it. So we're, right. we're playing catch up right now. So anyway, the, the whole thing here, Tony, is taxes are so important in our retirement because that's what the legislation says. And yep. so we have to look as part of a good retirement strategy. We have to look at how taxes are going to be a play. And we try to look at your income and say, okay, this is taxable. You have tax deferred in the middle and then tax free. And we're always trying to get you over to that tax free bucket as much as possible. Yeah. And well, and it's key to, it's key to minimize your tax burden in retirement. And another thing is since you're on that topic and I only know this because you've told me about this, Tara is, and you've talked about this on past shows is that so many people think, Oh, when I get to retirement, my taxes are going to be, I don't have to worry about taxes because I'm not earning and you know, I'm not working, <laughs> but uh, now more and more people do work in retirement. But the big key is, you still have to have income in retirement. It's just coming from your, your retirement funds. Uh, but taxes, those, a lot of those, most of those for most people are taxed. And even Social Security can be taxed, right? That's exactly right, Tony. And that's the key is there's this it used to be a common knowledge. I call it a common myth is, well, when I retire, I'm going to need only like 75 percent of what I was living on to live. And the thing is, though, Tony, is when you retire, you lose a lot of your tax deductions, right? Because your house is almost paid off. The kids are out of the house. So you're losing a lot of those tax deductions you had. And sure. the thing is, is when you retire, you finally have time to play. So, so you're, you're actually going to probably spend more money when you're retired than you did when you were working. Because yeah. now you have the time to take those vacations That's and true. catch up on those do-it-yourself projects at home. So that, yeah. I mean, of course, you have to go to Lowe's and buy all those tools. <laughs> 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 That's true. You have more time on your hands and with more time comes usually more spending for most of us. And and nobody wants to take a pay cut in retirement. I mean, you know, you don't want to take a pay cut. So uh, that is key, Tara, and just some great points in today's show. Now, we're almost out of time. Once again, I noticed it just flew by. Um, uh, part two of our episodes basically done here. So is there anything you want to add before we have to go? Well, Tony, I would just say like today's show and, and coupled with last week's show, when you sit down and find a financial advisor or services professional that's going to help you, it has to start with trust. You have to find that relationship where you look the person in the eye and say, OK, this person gets me. They understand where I am, what problem I'm trying to solve. And now they're showing me how to put all of my puzzle pieces together to maximize what I can do. And, and so that's what it's all about. So. For the show today, Tony, we, Chris and I have set aside those 20 complimentary appointments for those first 20 callers to say, I really like what you're talking about. I think, you know, I'm doing a lot of good things, but I'm not sure everything's working together. Right. And those are the people that Chris and I really like to take and create that plan for success. So, Tony, the number is 719-210-4242 to give us a call if you want to sit down and figure out if it's going to be a good fit to get you on that track to make that plan for success. That's awesome. And uh, thanks, Tara. And listeners, that does it for today's episode of Nolan Financial Radio with our host, Tara Nolan. Join us soon for another episode of Nolan Financial Radio. Take care, and we'll talk with you next time.